Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Be A Boss Coaching Podcast. My name is Beatriz, and I am the host of this podcast. I have a little bit of sad news. It is the beginning of March, so I looked at the analytics for February, and I was sad to see that the month of February was one of the lowest months of downloads and plays since we started the podcast back in last year in was it August that we started? <laughs> I don't remember anymore. But it was the lowest month since we've started. And what's interesting is that I have released more episodes since season two started. It was two episodes a week. I did say that I was going to go back to one episode a week because it is a lot of work for me to do two episodes a week. So I will be going back to one, but this is what I've learned. I've learned that I can't do two episodes a week unless I choose to invest in someone that will help me do that. Perhaps help me with editing and help me with scheduling and looking for guests. But since I'm not ready to take that step, I'm going to go back to once a week. And I believe once a week is still very valuable. So I'm going to go back to that. But I'd like to get your feedback around the interviews that I do. What questions would you like me to ask? I'd also like some feedback around the solo episodes. What are some things you want to know from me specifically in the journey that I've done so far, that I've taken so far? What are some questions that you have? This podcast is for you. I want you to get the most out of this. And I, I'd like to know. So please send in your questions and challenges to my email. You can email me at Beatriz, that's B E A T R I Z at be a boss coaching.com. You can write in the subject line listener feedback, and that way I can really be intentional about this. You know, I, I ask the questions that I ask because they're relevant to me, right? And also from my own experience as a coach working with other clients and the questions that they ask me. And so, but I want to know from you, the listener, what you'd like to learn about. So let me know. And hopefully we continue to grow this podcast. Share it with a friend, share it with a family member, tag it on Instagram. All of those things help. And uh, hopefully we can get the downloads and plates back up to grow every month all right y'all today i have a conversation with the incredible tiana nicole she is the ceo of with love tiana nicole and a business lifestyle coach drawing from her experiences tiana now helps entrepreneurs kickstart their ventures while also operating as a beacon for mastering the intricate dance between motherhood entrepreneurship and living with multiple sclerosis Prepare to learn from Tiana's story, her triumphs, her learnings, and above all, her ability to turn challenges into stepping stones. Get ready to be gripped by a conversation filled with entrepreneurial insights, growth, and the power of possessing an unyielding genuineness. Enjoy the show. Welcome to the Be A Boss Coaching Podcast, a leading podcast where we redefine entrepreneurship through the entrepreneurship journeys of women of color, BIPOC, and queer entrepreneurs. I'm Beatriz Rivera, and as a social worker turned entrepreneur coach and podcast host, I share my own journey and story. I decided to start my own coaching business during the pandemic when I was helping my dad, a veteran business owner, to keep his 23-year-old business open. Since then, I've thrown myself into courses, coaching, podcasts, and books. However, I've learned that entrepreneurship is a journey and we can all learn from each other's stories, mistakes, successes, and redefining the boundaries of what entrepreneurship can be. Subscribe to get new episodes every Monday and Friday on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you listen to podcasts. 
much for taking time out of your day to come and talk to us about your entrepreneurship journey and who you are and what your business does. Thank um, but you for I'm helping me. But before we move forward, if you can tell us your name and your business and the how your business serves and and we'll take it from there. Okay. Hi, you guys. I am Tiana Nicole. I am the CEO of With Love Tiana Nicole, and I am a business lifestyle coach. What I do in a nutshell is I help entrepreneurs start their businesses. Yay. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Tiana. Yeah, so I met you at the networking mixer that mm-hmm. I think maybe it was three three months ago, something like that. Mm -hmm. It was in December. I I launched it for my 35th birthday. That was a present to myself was to launch that as my business launch. Yeah. (laughs) It was incredible. It was such a beautiful, very fun networking mixer. Um, I'm looking forward to the next one whenever you have the next one. (laughs) I'd love to be there. But I just, I know we met there and we connected and I was so glad to have come across you and your business and seeing the way that you, as your first business launch, the way that you put such an incredible event together. Um, It was really nice to meet other business owners and then really to see the ways that you help other business owners in your community as well. Thank you. That was really cool to see. But I do want to take it back a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I want to ask about your journey up until now as a business owner. Mm -hmm. What would you say is a point in your life that you attribute to the genesis of, of your entrepreneurial journey? I think it was... It had to be about four, roughly four years ago. I mean, I was in a, I was at a company and I, I actually liked my job. It was really nice. It was, the company was a really good company. They were the reason why I actually got back into school. They encouraged me to go. And like when I first started back school, I was like, I don't even know, like they're paying for it. So I'm going to do it so I can get my degree. But I didn't really know what I wanted to do back then. I mean, I had started a business prior to, and I was just, I was, going through the motions of teaching myself how to do everything. Like I didn't have anybody doing graphics and doing our, my website, doing my social media. And I did everything myself. And I was like, oh my God, this is a lot. This is so much. But learning what I was doing it myself and then other people saw me doing it. I'm like, oh, I need help with this and that. So I just learned how to do a lot of things like building a website, starting the social media, getting all the information together. I just learned on my own. And that kind of, was a light switch on for me like instead of going into like my plan when I started school was to go into human resources to excel in my job and like going to school I was just like I don't want to go back to work I want to do this I want to help people (laughs) I want to help people build their businesses because I know how hard it is and I also think that it's very important to have a community that can help you like I'm used to helping just people that I know that I ran across or whatever, but I've seen that there was a big need for these types of services and people, a lot of like new entrepreneurs are scared to reach out to people for the help. So for me, it's, I'm nice. I can help you. Come on, let's help you. So that's initially like, that's the whole starting point of, I just want to help people do it because I know the struggle. Oh, incredible. That's, Thank yeah, you. that's really amazing just to see the need in your community and the fact that mm-hmm. you've seen other people in your circles trying to do this and then also having a hard time asking for help mm-hmm. and then you're like, let me do it. Let's do it. Yeah. We're going <laughs> to do it together. So that's really yeah. amazing. Thank you. At what point, if you could tell me a little bit about who you are, just because mm-hmm. I, we met and we were, so we were mingling. With mm-hmm. them. We didn't really get a chance to talk. Yeah. <laughs> so I'd like to get to know you. Who are you? So what is something that you'd like to tell us about yourself that you'd like people to know? And it could be anything like food or music or whatever you'd like to let people know. Um, I think my greatest 
accomplishment was being a mom. So that's my number one thing. <laughs> I am a mom of three kids. I have a nine-year-old, a three-year-old, and a one-year-old. And I'm a fiance. Uh, me and my, my fiance have been together for a very long time. I'm not going to say it like that. We've been together for a nice amount of time. <laughs> and uh, we have three kids together. So that is like the my biggest blessing is to have the, the little family that I've created. And then right outside of that, I am a business owner. I take that very personal because I work so hard for it. And I, I also, I am a multiple sclerosis survivor. I have multiple sclerosis. I was diagnosed about six years ago. So it has been a part of my journey. So I'd never like to leave it out because I go through the motions of having it. My kids have gone through with the, with me. My fiance has gone through with me. So that's also a part of the testimony that I have is I'm a survivor, of, but not a, it's an illness that doesn't go away. So I can't technically survive it, but I'm I'm living through it. Thank you for that vulnerability. It is tough to tell and let people know about the things that you go through, right? As a yeah. person. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you so much for sharing. I, no I really didn't know all of that, right? So I'm really yeah. glad that we you know each other <laughs> in that capacity. Yeah. Okay, so if you were to recall the beginning of your journey, what is a particular challenge that you yourself as a business owner have experience, but then because you help other business owners start their businesses, is there something that you see as a trend as well that people experience when they start? My journey started, like I said, about four years ago. And it just started with me wanting to help other people start their businesses and go through the motions. And it's more, a lot of people don't know how to start a business because they're not, they have an idea, but they don't understand the process. And so that is, that's why I call myself a lifestyle coach because entrepreneurship is lifestyle. And it's not something that you can just do overnight. Granted, it might work for some people overnight, but that's not the masses. It doesn't work like that for the masses. You have to put in a nice amount of work to have a successful business. And a lot of people don't know the most I've seen when I deal with people is like, where do I start? They know they have this idea. I want to do this. I know it's going to help people. I know it's going to have a great impact, but how do I start? What do I need? How do I get this done so that I can start doing what I want to do? Um, and outside of that would be the funding. A lot of people have a hard time with funding and marketing. A lot of people have a hard time with marketing, which is understandable because everything's so busy. People are still moving. And a lot of people that start entrepreneurship are still working. They still have a nine to five. So it's the balance between the two is hard for starting out. But I also, I just created a workbook, the new CEO workbook. And that workbook outlines a full year of how to structure your business. And it goes quarterly. So I tell people, I learned that through my own journey. Like you can't put everything on yourself at one time. You have to do it in increments and you have to do smart goals and start off with small goals that are attainable. And then you just keep moving up and up. That's the hardest thing. A lot of people want to just jump in head first and do everything at one time. And it's no, you're going to crash and burn. Please don't do that. <laughs> so that's my biggest thing with, um, with new clients is they're trying to figure out where to start. Yeah, it's overwhelming, right? I'm sure yeah. you mm -hmm. experience it's, like you said, everything that goes into from an idea to starting to mm -hmm. social media marketing, even registering your business. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. the state, every state is different. Exactly. Um, has different requirements. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot that when you begin researching, it becomes mm -hmm. overwhelming. Yeah. Um, and it's hard to figure out a starting point and go from there. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it's really good to have someone like you to help them hone in on the process because yes. it is a lot, but it's also yep. the fact that you have a workbook that's okay, we're going to outline this mm -hmm. um, and you don't, you can't do a year's worth of work in yes. a month. <laughs> I mean, exactly. You probably could, but like you said, that's when you see those stories of burnout. Yeah, exactly. And my biggest goal with all of my clients and like the mission behind what I'm doing is 
I want people to create businesses that have longevity. I want them to be, there's like a five-year mark. Most small businesses don't make it past that five years. Mm-hmm. I want to teach people how to build these businesses that can last five, 10, 15 years. I'll leave it to your, to your kids and it's something that can go a long way. I don't want to help someone build something and they put all this work into it and then two years later they're like okay this isn't working I'm not doing it because it's so much work you want to be able to see what you work for have gratitude be thankful and flourish so that's my mission behind what I'm doing that's incredible thank you so much thank you that's and and the fact that you have already created resources for people to Mm -hmm. do this in increments like you said and not have it be so overwhelming is you understanding the the trends and how people like you said dive head first sometimes yeah <laughs> and really really exciting and uh overwhelming mm-hmm. yeah yeah and i do learn from i know that you teach the mental stability and the strategy behind it and i think that that's very important for yeah. entrepreneurs like you to be an entrepreneur you have to be mentally ready to do that and <laughs> you need yeah. a strategy to do yeah. that so what we do go hand in hand, but I think it's very important to have the strategy because you're going in head first. You don't know what you're doing. You're not going to see the gratitude. You're not going to have the gratification if you don't, if you think that you're not succeeding. And I tell all my clients, you need to celebrate the small wins. It don't matter how small it is. Even if you say you haven't been posting on social media, but you went this week, you went every day and you posted something. Congratulations. You made it through a week of consistent content. Those type of things will help you. Like, I can do a week. I can do two weeks. I can do a month. I can do a whole strategy to plan out. Like, that. those type of things, you have to just embrace that because it's the lifestyle. Exactly. And I love that you said that it's a lifestyle because you're right. It's it's difficult when you're, I think, when you're trained to Mm -hmm. be in a nine-to-five setting. Like, you're used to the structure that they set up for you. Mm-hmm. And then when you go into your own business and then try to figure that out, you have to create a whole structure yourself, yeah. right? <laughs> exactly. And you can definitely take in from what you've learned, right? But mm-hmm. it's still, you're accountable to yourself. So learning mm-hmm. how to stay accountable to yourself, it's a lifestyle, yeah. it's a practice and it's a process. So I'm glad that you're, it's not just starting and like doing the things. It's like, mm-hmm. no you actually help people with creating that lifestyle. Like mm-hmm. it's the same thing with diets, right? They don't yeah. work because their diets, it, it has to be a lifestyle that you do. Mm-hmm. To it's a lifestyle change. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So thank you for that. That's really illuminating for me too. Cause I'm like, <laughs> oh, wait, that is a, a really good way to look at it. Yeah. All right. So have you, I, I like to talk about imposter syndrome just because mm. I know that, uh, it's a common feeling with mm-hmm. new entrepreneurs, I would say, especially because it is, like we've said, it can get overwhelming. There's a lot to learn. There's so yeah. much to learn when it comes mm-hmm. to that. And and I'm wondering if you've ever experienced imposter syndrome in your entrepreneurship journey yeah. and uh, how you've managed to navigate that in your, as you move forward. I definitely have experienced that. I think that's something that the majority of um, entrepreneurs, especially with the era of social media, like you are always looking to see if you measure up to someone or what are they doing better that you're not doing. And I've learned, I had an amazing coach. Her name name is Ariana. She's actually a childhood friend. We've been friends since seventh grade. And um, I reached out to her. I had gotten to, is this what I'm supposed to be doing or I know that I know what I'm doing, but why is it not resonating with my clients? What am I doing wrong? And I couldn't figure out my business at one point. And so I reached out to her. She was like a mindset coach. I reached out to her and she helped me change my mindset. So it's more like, or she she helped me with the clarity of what I'm doing. Because I, I had a big issue being that I'm a new entrepreneur, which is why I can relate to a lot of my clients. I'm a new entrepreneur. I'm a student. I'm going to school to do this, but I'm not a known business coach. So it's, I'm just putting my feet into the world. So I was like, really, dang, are people going to gravitate to me? Are they going to believe that I can do what I say I can do? So I was stuck in there and I'm like, okay, 
because before I launched, I was doing a program, a pilot program, and I didn't feel like I was creating, making the process. What is the word? There wasn't clarity in my process. And it could show in what I was teaching, like how, how in my clients, how I was teaching. So I was like, I got to figure this out because something's not right. And she helped me get clarity on what I actually needed. And I think that coaches, I call myself a forever learner because I, first of all, I've been in school forever. So that doesn't count, but <laughs> I do. I call myself a forever learner because I feel like we are all students of this lifestyle. Like we're students of entrepreneurship. So we are going to constantly learn being that we have to follow trends for certain aspects of our business. So we are going to be learning this whole journey. So I, I'm very, I still take classes on certain things. I'm still in college, I'm not done yet. I'll be done in May, I'm almost uh, graduating Toro. <laughs> but um, I do feel like we are gonna learn things all the time. So I think it's important to have a coach, even no matter the level that you are in your business, because your eyes can only see so much. So sometimes you do need to step back or step to the side and let someone help you see what you can't see. And she was that for me. She, along with other people that I would work with, I had gotten so bad, I was second guessing myself. And when I was talking to her, she was like, what are you scared of? And I was like, well, these people don't know me and they have all these people on Instagram that are doing this. And she was like, so what? She's like, it's okay. It's a lot of people that are doing what you're doing. So what? <laughs> she was like, a lot of people are doing the same thing, but you have to understand what you're offering versus what everyone else is offering and play on that. Upsell yourself. You have to be kind. So I had to learn the confidence and stop trying to like, maybe I should do it like this person. Maybe I should do it like that person. No, what you have to say, what you have to offer and what you have to teach people need. And they're going to, if they need it from you, they're going to get it from you. Don't worry about that. She teaches like one-on-one -on -one, instead of trying to reach the masses, reach who you need to reach and then the masses will come. That is how I navigated through that. I definitely didn't do it alone. And I, that's why I feel like it's a lifestyle because we can't do this entrepreneurship journey alone. We need people, we need resources, we need a network. Mm, that's so good. I'm, I'm glad that you Thanks. shared that because as you're a business lifestyle coach, but then you have your own coach. You had your mm -hmm. own coach, a mindset coach mm -hmm. that helped you even the the fact that you're going to school, you're learning this, mm -hmm. and you have all of this experience, you have the training, that the mind is going to tell you their stories. And the fact that you yeah. reached out and that you were able to say, hey, I, I need help with this. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know? And I think a lot of the times with entrepreneurship, we think that we have to do it alone exactly um, in this society i feel like it's very individualistic and mm -hmm. we have to figure it out on our own and it's not within communities of color i feel like we thrive best when we reach mm -hmm. out and help others like we because yeah. we always want to help our community right yeah. and of course mm -hmm. they're gonna want to help us back so thank you for sharing that in letting us know how that you managed that then it wasn't alone so. yeah. and i do want to go into any particular things that you feel you have done that have really brought wins whether that means in clients or like whatever that means for you maybe the launching of your business is there anything you feel that you've done in your particular journey that has brought wins to you your way? Yeah, I think me um, creating the network, I think that like my launch, when I launched my business entrepreneur mixer, that was like the start of creating the network because I was able to meet like, of course, people like you, which I'm like so grateful <laughs> that we met. But like the response that I got from it and how beneficial it was for so many people, because a lot of people at my event, that was their first time doing anything like that. And they felt so like, good about what they were doing they were getting a little bit more comfortable talking to other people about their business and they just felt empowered to continue to go to continue to grow in their business and i think that taught me surprisingly the people that were there taught me to keep going so like after that i'm just like i'm just jump i'm not jumping in head first because i know i said that wasn't a good idea <laughs> but 
I am more open to community and networking. And so I just go into these meetings when I'm like, okay, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm offering. And I think the genuineness behind what I am aiming to do is what is allowing me to get the wins that I'm getting because it's not, I'm not superficial in anything that I'm asking or anything that I'm doing. I really genuinely want to help people and it's being shown through just me expressing. And I didn't, I wouldn't have done this prior to that because I'm so like timid about, okay, can I really do this? But after that event and seeing the, the response from me, like, I can do this. Now let's go talk. We need everybody to get some help. Let's go do this. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That event was incredible. Honestly, it inspired me. No. <laughs> I was really amazed at the level of how much you put into that event, mm -hmm. just the space and bringing in all those people together. And the fact that mm -hmm. all of the people there were from your community, it's mm -hmm. literally your community coming to support you. <laughs> yeah. And that was really beautiful to see. And I love that that was one of the particular things that really continue to keep you going. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering what gave you the empowerment or like what, I don't want to say empowerment, but what gave you the courage, I guess mm -hmm. is the best word to say, I, I'm going to create this event and I'm going to invest in the decorations or even the chairs or like even putting it on Eventbrite and all mm -hmm. the things that went into it would give you the courage to bring all of that together and put it together? I would say just the, the goal that I had because I have started being intentional on in what I wanted to do and what I wanted from my business and I wanted to scale. So I'm like, it's about time. I, I'm granted, I am doing things in my community, and I love every person that has that supports me. But it's time to scale because my biggest goal, or not my biggest goal, but one of my biggest goals for 2014 is when I graduate to be working in my business. I don't want to go back to a nine to five. So in order to do so, I have to work and scale my business so that I can have clients when graduation comes so I can continue to work and go full force in my business once graduation is done because I've worked so hard to get here like I've been in school with all three of my kids <laughs> and <laughs> I am I've worked so hard and I want to work for myself as super engaged parent so I want I don't want to miss anything with my kids so I'm like if I can make my own schedule and still be able to go to basketball games and go to gymnastics and go to football games and go to track meets and do the practices and spend time with my kids and do the education and, and all that and still have a business that is lucrative, I'm going to do that. So in order to do that, it's time to put yourself out there. So that was just me stepping out and putting myself out there. I love it. Thank you for sharing that because I'm still scared. <laughs> <laughs> this is my own way of networking because yeah. creating and putting out an event sounds like a big deal and mm -hmm. the fact that it is in incredible and in bringing people together so yeah i i hope i'm ready for the next one and there will definitely be a next one <laughs> <laughs> i'm ready for the next one and now the fact that people have come in there and they know mm -hmm. they can bring other people in. yes and I, I'm excited to see the growth that comes with taking that action, and putting on these events. So talking about investments, I'm wondering if there's any areas of your business that you've invested in that have helped you get off the ground. I think that when it comes to investments, it's tricky to figure out what is a good investment now mm -hmm. and whether this is a good investment maybe later in the future or so I'm wondering if there's any investments that you've had in your business that have really helped you and if there are any investments that maybe you felt like maybe would have been better for later on in the future I will say that not every investment is a good investment I have made saw things where I'm like let me try and take this class and see how it works and a lot of the things that I've done, not a lot, 
but a, a few things that I've done have been like repetitive or not beneficial at all. Um, and But I don't necessarily look at it as a bad investment. It's okay, this is just a lesson. Now you need to be more strategic when you are researching certain things because either you're going to take time out of your day and you're going to hear the same thing that you just heard from the last five classes you took or you're going to find something that is more beneficial for you at the time. Um, I would say that my greatest investment was my coaching with Ariana um, because she helped me with the clarity for my business. That was the, and she helped me just elevate my business. So she, that investment, investing in a coach, I think is your greatest investment outside of like the money that you put into your business. But when it comes to things that aren't tangible, that is like the best thing that you can do for your business. Because like I said, you get those eyes that see what you can't see and that help you get clarity in what you actually need in your business. I love it. The lessons that you learn, you still get yes. better look and listen. Yeah, I, yes. I say that as well. I think with every investment, yeah, you never know what that will turn into, but mm -hmm. for sure there will be a lesson. So yes. thank you. I will say that when you are looking for a coach, make sure you're looking for someone who, um, who teaching and visions align with what you're what you need make sure if you're looking for a clarity coach or if you need clarity in your business look for a clarity coach if you need strategy look for a strategic coach look you have to make sure you don't want to just spend money and then not get what you actually need out of it so mm -hmm. just be very intentional when you're looking for a coach yes and i would say i would add that you want to really think about how you're feeling like why are you feel called to this particular mm -hmm. investment and to really take that time i think we do make decisions yes. based on reactions sometimes yeah. and how we're feeling but at the end of the day it is you learn through that as well you learn mm -hmm. like how you behave and and then in the future you can alter that if needed but very good observation just around figuring out if you're looking for a particular coach or what is the specific mm -hmm. outcome that you want help with yeah so, exactly i appreciate that is there any failures that you recall that you've learned from just because and I like asking this question because you know within entrepreneurship and on social media you know we see all these wins like people are posting their you know wins and which is great it's super great mm -hmm. but I don't see when people post their failures and that right. happens a lot in entrepreneurship mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if there's any, a particular time in your life where you felt like, yeah, that didn't pan out the way I thought, but if there was a lesson from that, I'm wondering if there was a, an experience. I'm trying to think, because I don't necessarily, like I, I have changed my mindset to think that, or to take failures as a lesson. So I don't like to say that I failed. I just, okay, I learned from that. <laughs> and like I said, I'm a forever learner. I'm constantly learning from things. Something that turned out to be a lesson. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. So anything you that turned out to be a good lesson for you. <laughs> <laughs> I will say the my lesson on clarity because I haven't, or I'm still learning or getting comfortable with speaking in front of people i'm so better at one-on-one -on -one type of thing so learning to and so i okay, okay this is a good one i just remember <laughs> um going through my last semester i was in an internship and we were they were helping us do interviews and mock interviews and granted i was the only business owner entrepreneur in the i still take those type of things i'm still going to use what we're doing to fit into what i'm doing so we did like mock interviews and it was more of the sense where what if my internship um, manager, she said, give me your elevator pitch. Like you're starting a business. What are you doing? And I just broke down. I was in her office just crying my little eyes out. And she's like, what's wrong with you? And I was like, I don't know how to tell you what I do. I was like, you're not my target audience. You're not my ideal client. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> 
And she was like, it doesn't matter if I'm your client or not. What you need to know is you need to learn how, learn how to articulate what you're offering. Because if you don't sound confident, then you're not going to get clients. They're not going to work with you because you don't even know what you're doing. And I was like, oh my goodness. So I literally spent the entire rest of that internship working on my elevator pitch. And by the time we had like every couple of weeks, we'll meet with our, our mentors and I met with her and I went in there and I'm so confident. She's like, okay, so what did you learn this whole internship? And I was like, girl, let me tell you, I learned my elevator pitch. Let me tell you what I do. <laughs> but it was like, I didn't consider that first meeting with her a failure. It was like, this is something that you have to know how to do. You have to know how to sell yourself. You can't, you're not going to be able to talk for 30 minutes to everybody and let them know what you're doing, figure out their problems. You can't do that. You have about 15 seconds in this elevator to tell them what you do and sell them and make convince them that you are who they need. And I learned how to do that from her. So that was a lesson. And I went on to use that same elevator pitch and talk to other people, which is how I got like a, a panel experience. I got another internship to, to create a um, initiative. Like though that helped me to, build my brand and it helped me to just be better so that was a lesson thank you yeah thank you for sharing and it's always hard I think that yeah. <laughs> it's so hard because even when you're when, at, when you think you have it down mm -hmm. and you go and do it it changes yes <laughs> and you're like wait a minute why did it change but right. yeah thank you thank you for sharing that okay I'd like to know if you've thought about any particular skills that you believe you need to grow and nurture as an entrepreneur, are, any, are there any skills that you feel you have nurtured in your journey as a business owner and have really helped you as you continue to move forward? Yeah, I think just the confidence, building my confidence in what I do, that has been a struggle for me in the sense that my experience is not what you will get from a lot of other coaches, but the passion is there and I am learning to be confident in who I am as a business lifestyle coach, what I offer and how beneficial it can be to other entrepreneurs. And I think that's important. I still tell my clients, own what you do. It doesn't matter who else is doing it or if they're doing it this way or that way. Own who you are in your field and tell people about it. And you're not every client is who you need to work with not every client is your ideal client but who needs it they will find you or you will find them so I think that having confidence in who you are as an entrepreneur is like one of the best things that you can do for your business thank you and I know you're helping people do that or integrate that into your business and how you help people so I, I agree with that all right, before we wrap up, I do have another question just around mm -hmm. your experience. I love with the people that I talk to and the clients that I have, I primarily love to work with women of color mm -hmm. and my talk and career entrepreneurs. So are there any experiences that you feel are experienced more as an entrepreneur are experienced more by women of color? or BIPOC entrepreneurs of color? Um, yes, I think that, of course, being a female entrepreneur is not as glorified as a male entrepreneur, in a sense. I think that it's getting there, but it's still hard for women to step into certain um, spaces and feel comfortable. But I think that goes back to the confidence of the entrepreneur and being a woman, you have to step into these spaces and co be confident in who you are and know that you, he might be here and you might, you were right here. You know what I mean? Like they're not above you because of your gender. If you are very skilled in what you do, then you can box with the best of them. And I think that's very important with people of color as well as uh, female um, entrepreneurs. We have to know and understand and take in the fact that we are just as good as everybody else. Like we are not below anyone. We can, like I said, we can box with the best of them. If you know what you're doing, you can hang in there and just have that confidence and know that you are worthy, you are deserving 
and you can do it. And I think that the clarity as well, when you have clarity in your mission, that helps a lot. Like I, the internship that I got now to create an entrepreneur initiative, I went into that meeting looking for an internship. I wasn't even looking for a paid internship. I was like, let me just, let me shadow you and see how I can benefit from working with you. You help you do the same thing I do, but let me see what you can teach me, what I can learn from you. And I went in there and Tiana, you do the same thing that we do. We don't need your services. We need for you to create something that's bigger than this. And all I did was just tell him what I wanted to do and what I'm doing in my business. And he was like, I don't want to pay you for that. I want to pay you for you to create this on a higher level. And I was so shocked. I was like, Donnie, you got a job? Like doing in, in my business, my business just got hired <laughs> to do this. But I went in just being confident in what I had to offer and understanding my value. And I was like, oh yeah, I'm definitely down to do this. But it was like the clarity that I had because I had worked so long on my elevator pitch. It's like, I got him with my elevator pitch. So what I'm doing, he can see it. He understands what I'm doing, what I'm trying to do. And it's working. So I think that the clarity and the confidence plays a big part in being able to feel adequate in those spaces. Thank you. I enjoyed that. Thank you for saying that. Okay, so before we wrap, where can people find you? How can people work with you and get to know more about you? And if they want to start their businesses and they are ready and they need some, a starting point, how can they get in touch with you? My handles are the same across the board, which is something that I also teach. Your social media handles should be the same everywhere you go so that people can recognize you. <laughs> My social media handle is with love, Tiana Nicole, on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and YouTube. That's where you can find me. My website is also www.withlovetiananicole. All the services that I offer, including my new workbook, is on there. And there is a contact button if you need to reach out to me. I'm very approachable. You need help, I can help you. Hit me up on Instagram, Facebook, website, anywhere you can find me. I, I will respond. Thank you. And they will be on the show notes for everybody to click on them. So if you're listening to this, they're down in the show notes. If you're watching this, go down to the description and you'll find the links on there. Yes. Thank you so much, Tiana. It was really great to get to know more about you and to be communicating with you and get to learn your brain and how your brain works and <laughs> your business and how you help people start their own businesses. I'm excited to continue to be in community with you and to of course. collaborate in however, whatever capacity um, yes. we can. Thank you so much for having me. And I definitely look forward to more opportunities with you. We are going to do amazing things for entrepreneurs. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Be A Boss Coaching Podcast. Remember to come on over to the BeABossCoaching.com and book your free discovery call where you can learn more about coaching with me, what it takes to start a business and grow the skills while growing your business at the same time. I'm excited to learn more from you. Remember to sign up to our newsletter and come back every Monday and Friday for new episodes. Thank you.